In this episode of Redefine, I speak with Photoshop Hall of Famer Dave Cross, who has also taught Photoshop longer than nearly anyone on the planet. And he shares insight into the software's surprising roots and explains why practicing Photoshop photography will take your work to the next level. Adorama TV presents The Redefine Show with Tamara Lackey, where she talks with creatives who make it all work, bringing their best creative and business tips to you, along with fresh ideas and equipment favorites. You can check out much more content with photographers, filmmakers, and entrepreneurs by watching Adorama TV. Hi, Dave. Hi. How are you? I'm excellent, thank you. Um, so you have the distinction of being the person I know who's known Photoshop the longest. Does that <laughs> well, sound right? That sounds about right. I mean, I, I worked at an Apple dealer many, 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 many moons ago, and I first started using PageMaker 1.2, and then this thing called Illustrator came out and used that for a while, and I started teaching it right away because I kind of had, a, my degree is actually in education, so my parents are happy that I'm actually teaching Yay. stuff <laughs> for a while because it didn't look that way. Um, and then this thing, some guy came into our office and said, we're playing with this new software. I think it's going to be called Photoshop. So oh. it was actually kind of a quick, well, almost like a pre- That, that almost sounds like know. one of those moments in a film where you're like a flashback. Yeah, I think like, it'll be Photoshop. Yeah, I think it'll be Photoshop, maybe. Um, and so right away I saw it. And the interesting thing was a lot of people don't realize that when Photoshop first came out, it really was a, came with your scanner. Almost everyone who got Photoshop, it was like, hey, if you buy this scanner, we'll put in this version called Photoshop LE, which is called Limited Edition. And it was kind of like, it was a really smart move on Adobe's part because it got you hooked and then you wanted to upgrade to the full version to get all the mm. rest of the stuff. Yeah. I mean, what was it well, literally called? I, I, in fact, the original version was called, I'm going to think of Barney Scan XP. What a catchy name, huh? What a horrible you wonder, name. You wonder why they switched it to Photoshop, because Barney, Barney Scan. Scan? Well, it's because the first company that the Knoll brothers worked with had a scanner and it was called the Barney Scan because it was like a high-end scanner. Ah. This is before the other Barney that most people who have children know. This right, was like yeah. a, <laughs> another Barney. Uh, so that, and then Ado uh, Adobe bought it and it became Photoshop. So I just happened to be playing around with it right in those early days and right from the get-go. I was like, this is pretty cool. So in the very beginning, it wasn't hard to know all of the Photoshop. No, I mean, it had, I don't even know the numbers, but it had like, you know, 10 tools. There were no layers. Yeah. So you pretty much... Got it. Nailed it. You know, and I taught classes where it was like, okay, you want to add a drop shadow? Here's the 14 steps to do that. And don't make a mistake because you got to start all over again. So it was very, very different. So right away, you got to know all of it. You were teaching it. Um, when did you start thinking, I want to align to this? Well, it, early on, I mean, I was very lucky because I saw it right at the beginning and I worked for a very forward-thinking company, this Apple dealer that realized you weren't going to make much money selling only computers. So they were always doing value-added service and one of them was classes. And I just found myself, I love the fact of showing someone something and have them, that light bulb go off yeah. and them go, oh, and understanding. So I started, because at that time I had multiple jobs in this small company and I started gravitating more and more towards the training side. And after a few years I left and started my own business and right away I was a Photoshop trainer at a time where people were like, really, you're gonna only teach Photoshop? So you teach like Excel or something? And right. I was like, no, I'm gonna stick with Photoshop. But it got to the point I where- I think this is gonna go somewhere. I, I had this feeling- And you're in the Hall of Fame. I am. What, yes. what is the Photoshop Hall of Fame? Photoshop Hall of Fame How do you is, get in it? <laughs> well, it's, uh, it's, it's actually a very nice honor because it's one of the things that NAP does is they, every year they have a, people nominate. The like National members, Association of- uh, Photoshop yeah. professionals and, and members nominate people that they think deserve based on what they've contributed and so on. And there's kind of two sides. There are what I might call the builders, the people who work at Adobe that started things and have taken Adobe further and then there's sort of an educator side. Mm. So in 2009, I was very lucky to be inducted into the Hall of Fame and have this That actually is cool program. to align to it a is. program I mean, it's, that long. It's nice to, to get that. I mean, I do it anyway and I wouldn't, I mean, the, tr the little trophy in my office is nice and it was great, very gratifying, but I do it more for the person that has that look and they go, oh. Mm. I get it. And so you you started out obviously now software training, understanding mm -hmm. it, learning it, and then moved into photography. Right. I mean, I I did photography back in high school, and I said, um, and <laughs> but that was like film, and it was just too much effort, and I tried to convince All my the chemicals. Well, my, I tried to convince my parents, can we put a dark room in our basement? They're like, no. So <laughs> that kind of curtailed that. Well, then I'm so, not working at this anymore. <laughs> so I, I, Photoshop intrigued me, but at the time I was always scanning everything in. And then where it really started for me, I had this idea for a tutorial and I realized I was spending an hour looking through stock photos. I thought, or I could take my camera, 
and just take a photo to use in this tutorial. Yeah. And as soon as I started doing that, it turned completely around and to, to I love photography and that's a big part of my life and I have my own studio now and I love it, but I came Photoshop first, photography second. I, I was talking to some instructors here actually a few years ago and they were, we were having the traditional get it right in the camera versus fix it later in Photoshop and I sort of stuck my hand up and said, I think you're missing a middle part which is yeah take advantage of Photoshop, do things you can't do in camera alone. Right. And they were kind of like, what are you talking about, young punk? You know, because they were all old school. And I was like, well, think of it this way, get it right in the camera. There are situations where you can't mm -hmm. because the, how can you do two exposures at once or whatever it might be, or right. more importantly, I want to end up with a photo, uh, an image where I have a person leaning up against the wall on one side and then a close-up of their face on the other. And I can do that easily in Photoshop if I take the photos with that in mind. Right. So in my brain, you I go through the viewfinder there. and I go, okay, that would be the background layer. Now let's have you turn this way. And in my mind, I'm thinking that would be the other layer. Yeah. And let's just for fun, let's take a picture of just the wall by itself in case I want to use that as a texture. And so I'm always thinking, capture this photo with the express purpose of doing something in Photoshop as opposed to, oh, I can clone that out later. I right. mean, I do that a little bit too, sure. but I'm also lazy. I try to get it as right as I can. And my expression is people say, get it right in the camera. I say, get it the way you like in the camera. Get it good enough. Right. So you get it to the point where I <laughs> like this, like it, yeah. this is going to help me. It's going to save me time. But now I have room on this side of the image to do something else where if I only thought of that later, then I'd be trying to I don't know, extend the wall or something that would be much more difficult. Yeah, and in fact, when I first started shooting, I, I for the first couple of years, self-consciously would kind of pretend that that gorgeous contrasted black and white came out of the camera that way. <laughs> I was like, what? I was like trying to hide right, it a sure. little bit. And then later I'm like, wait, I'm spending hours in Photoshop finishing these mm -hmm. for print finish quality. Why am I not completely selling that? And making right. a big deal of it, and now I do. Mm -hmm. I make I make a very big point of yeah. saying, I, you know, it's the the shot is half finished at capture, mm -hmm. and the rest goes in. And I, you know, I, I think those who get to sit in and watch your teaching, I mean, they're, they're taking away so much that boosts sales and help mm -hmm. um, really. I mean, trying to get a business up and running. It's not just for hobbyists. I mean, right. And that's. A, I mean, I've talked to wedding photographers that are like they're faced with that same old Uncle Bob who does yeah, the yeah. wedding for nothing yeah. and has a better camera or the same camera. And I'm like, well, then that's where Photoshop. That's comes in is that's the thing you can do differently is that I mean anyone can buy Photoshop but if you've studied or looked at techniques that you can do quickly because that's yes. the other part is you don't want to have to take five hours to create that you want to say well, if I go in planning with for this then it's a okay background layer extract yeah. this blend that in I like that done I like that a lot what's your gear setup in general um I I'm uh I'm a cheapskate. You're a cheapskate, <laughs> I all right? Am. I'm always the guy that like, you can do it all looks, when, when the D800 came out, I was like, yeah, but now people will be selling their D700, so I'll buy one of those used. Nice. So okay. that's kind of my approach is not yeah. the, I'm not the, uh, one of our buddies, Zach Arias, has this expression that all photographers have gas, which is gear acquisition syndrome, because they always want the latest, greatest. I'm not one of those guys. I'm yeah. like, I'll wait for that. Yeah. You know, I don't, my, this camera still takes nice photos. So right. I'm the minimalist. I mean, in my studio, I have, it's a rental studio where I also do my workshop, so I have pretty nice lighting and stuff, but I just have the you know good quality of everything, and I travel with the D700 and a lens or two, and also don't want to carry too much, so I try to do enough to capture really good photographs that sometimes stand all on their own, and yeah. others, it's that, the look at all these too. textures, or, I mean, I have this humongous folder. So outside of Photoshop and outside of photography, I hear you have a secret talent. <laughs> well, I have a, a hobby I've done for many years, and it's people call it a hobby, but in our hobby, it's more like a full-time passionate profession. That's singing barbershop, mm -hmm. so four-part harmony, a cappella type stuff. Plus the fact that my son has sung with me for like the last 10 years, so that's pretty cool too. Right, you said he started when he was 13? So, <clears throat> can you sing for us? <laughs> Well, as I explain, I, I will, but I explain it doesn't bit. have the same impact without the three other parts. And, the, and barbershop music is very mom and apple pie and love songs. So one of like, um, let's see. Uh, Let me call you sweetheart. I'm in love with you. That would be a fairly typical. And imagine like other Did parts making it sound. Did he just get a lot more attractive? <laughs> And I gotta say, my wife loves when I sing, I'm so that's sure. kind of the motivation for it. Although she really likes the deep voice too, and I don't sing that part. I'm like, hello, I'm the melody <laughs> guy, look at me. So I'm curious, the workshops you do. Um, I am a photographer and I teach 
uh, photography workshops, I've gone to them. Um, I've actually never gone to just simply a post-processing mm -hmm. workshop. I mean, how, would, how is that structured and what's the most you can do before people are like, oh my God. <laughs> well, there's, there's two different things that I do. One are one day seminars where it's much like we do here at Photoshop World where you sit and watch. It's not hands-on, it's a seminar delivery where you watch the presenter do various things and have a workbook to refer to, and those are typically a full day, five one hour classes with each hour being a different topic. Got so it. those are like the, we come to your city kind yeah. of tour thing, yes. and that's Kelby Training Live. And then I have my own workshop center in Tampa, which is a photo studio that has a classroom set up, and those range from one day, two day, I did one three day class that was kind of a more of an in-depth Photoshop, and those are bring your own laptop. And let's uh, dig in. Let's dig right in, but it's usually, I mean, I don't try to, it wouldn't work to overwhelm people and say, let's cover everything. So like even a three-day class was Photoshop basics, but really getting into it. Hmm. I like to use the word essentials because you can't teach every, everyone everything, but I, here's the essential information to get started. Seminars are great, Photoshop Earl is great, but that's why I started the hands-on workshops because I thought that was kind of the missing pieces for, there are some people that can't learn by watching online or by watching someone with a projector, they need to have their hands on their computer with their software, with their images, yeah. and someone there to go, no, no, just, yeah, move that yeah. over and. But well, we do learn so much better mm -hmm. that way. Like, okay, I think now so. I know I, I can I think you do retain this. it better, too. Uh, so tell us where people can find out more about you. Well, I have a couple of main websites. Decross.com is kind of my overall blog where I post various things about what's going on. And then the workshop site is DaveCrossWorkshops.com. And I have others as well. I have a a quiz game that I brought out for Photoshop. It's an app called the Photoshop Quiz Game. It's yeah. just a fun way to test your knowledge of Photoshop and learn something along the way. Oh, that's so, smart. I like yeah, that. And what fun. about social media? Um, at Dave Cross is my Twitter. Uh, I'm on Google Plus a lot, although I've never figured out an easy way to tell people except search for Dave Cross because <laughs> it's like you can't just say it's this long number is my Google Plus oh, account. Right, yeah. And I have a Facebook account, which I don't remember. It's like the Dave Cross or I don't know, some name that wasn't Wait Wait, nail your social yeah, media there. Uh, I'm really good at that part. <laughs> I use it a lot, but it's like trying to share it. I, just have, I have buttons on my website. Look, click here. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the Twitter. Yeah. That's the Facebook. All right, good. You know. That's good to know. All right, well, thank you so much oh, for your time. Oh, it's my pleasure. Appreciate it. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. Place your order by 8 p.m. and it ships the same day. Plus, next time you're in New York City, be sure to visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue.